This is the V7 Swamp Ash from Sire. And y'all, this might be one of the greatest bases under $1,000 I've ever played. It has tones for days for any genre. For playability, it is absolutely insane. This neck, all right, I'm just gonna cut into this right now. This neck is amazing. <laughs> I absolutely love this neck. But nonetheless, the V7 Swamp Ash, it's a pretty awesome base. So Sire, this is a brand I don't have a whole lot of experience with. And really the one time I have played one was at Tomon two, three years ago, and I barely remember it. Now that was one of the first generation models and it was one of the cheaper ones too. But this V7 generation two that I played is again, probably one of the best bases for under a thousand dollars that I've ever played. Before we dig into the V7 and for the sake of transparency, I do want to say that this video is sponsored by Sweetwater and they have provided me with this base for this video. But that has no effect on my opinions, my playing, the sounds in this, or anything. So yeah, let's just get right in. Now the V7 is obviously inspired by the Jazz Bass, aka Marcus Miller's favorite. But what I really love about Marcus Miller is when he created Sire Basses, is that he obviously had a vision and wanted to change things up, but he wanted to keep the core where it was. He loved the idea of the jazz bass. He just wanted to make it his own and add these little features to it that work really well, in my opinion. Starting with the body, it's a very familiar jazz bass shape and it's made of swamp ash. It has a great tone to it and a really nice weight as well. The swamp ash itself just looks really nice. And then on the back, you can see the string through ferrules as well as the battery compartment for the 18 volt preamp. For the bridge, you have Sire's own designed heavy mass steel bridge. And this bridge is awesome. Handles in tune very well. I love how big and blocky it is. So you know there's a lot of mass to it and it just does a great job. For the pickups, you have the Marcus Miller Super J Revolution set. Now what's really impressive about these pickups is that they can really honestly get such a great vintage tone as well as a really awesome modern tone too. The actual variety in tones that you can get with the pickups is really awesome. But to add to that variety of tones, you have the Marcus Heritage 3 preamp. Now this preamp is probably one of the coolest things about this bass. It sounds so damn good, y'all. I truly do love the crazy amount of different tones you're able to achieve with these pickups and this preamp together. It is quite shocking, honestly. For your controls, you have five knobs, two of which are stacked, as well as a two-way toggle switch. Going down in order, your first stacked pot is your main volume on top, then your main tone at the bottom. Then next to that is your pickup blending pot. Then you have your treble control. Then for your second stack knob, you have your boost and cut controls for your mids, as well as the mid frequency for the lower part. Your two-way toggle switch controls whether you have it in active or passive mode. Then finally, your last knob is for your bass control. Now all these together just makes for such a great preamp that sounds so good, so natural, and so warm too that again is great for a lot of different kind of genres. Then moving up, you have the highlight of this bass, in my opinion at least, and that is this beautiful neck. God, I love this neck, y'all. You have a 20 fret bound maple neck and fretboard that has white perloid block inlays. And y'all, it's so hard to explain, but it's so much thinner than a regular jazz bass neck that you would find on a Fender, which is what I was mainly comparing it to. But it's so much thinner, but it feels so natural and so smooth as well. Then two extra features about the neck that I really enjoy are the rolled edges for the frets that just, 
It feels so good in your hands. And then for the truss rod adjustment, instead of it being at the top where the headstock is, it's at the bottom, so it's much easier to access. Then moving up the neck, you have a bone nut as well as the headstock, which is... <sighs> I don't like it. I'm sorry. I just don't like the design of the headstock. Now, the open gear tuners that Sire has, they work really well, and I love the string tree too, but y'all, the shape of the headstock, I just personally can't get behind. I know, I'm the bad guy, no one likes me, that's fine, it's just my opinion. I hate this headstock so much, but at the same time, eh, it's just an opinion. So two things that I did notice about this space. One, one of the inlays has a little mark inside of it. And then on the side of the neck, I noticed around the binding, there's like scuffed up some like, just little like road rash essentially. And I just sort of took this as like, oh, okay, this is basically just like a manufacturer defect. So I contacted Sweetwater inquiring about it. And they basically said, no, this is a pre-release sample that we demoed around and basically made its way around the offices. They made, I think two videos or so with this one. And apparently Marcus Miller came in and even played around on it too. So it's one of those things where I was like, oh, okay, so this isn't one that a customer would get. So one of the many cool things about Sweetwater is when you're ordering a base from there, you can choose exactly which one you want by the serial number, which is just so crazy and so awesome to me because you can choose the exact picture and see the picture of the base that you are going to get. And on top of that, they have a 55 point inspection that every single instrument that goes out the door receives to make sure that the instrument that you get is the one that you want. Then on top of that, they have other things like free shipping, payment plans, a free two year warranty, as well as 30 day free returns if you don't like whatever you buy. And of course, to me at least, this is the biggest deal is that whenever you buy something from Sweetwater, you get free candy. Come on, what, what's not the love? But overall with the Sire V7, again, this base is just mind blowing to me. I'm very surprised I have not tried Sire before this. I've had a lot of people inquire to me about them and ask me, hey, when are you gonna try Sire? When is one gonna be on the channel? Well, now guess what? You're happy, so that makes me happy. But this base, again, is just absolutely incredible. So much tone, so much feel, quality, and playability for all under $1,000, and I absolutely had a blast with it. But of course, let me know what you guys think about the V7 and what other Sire bases should I be checking out? Thank y'all so much for watching as always, for watching, subscribing, commenting, following me on social media, all that crazy stuff. I truly do appreciate it, y'all. And a humongous thank you to my Patreon supporters over here. Look at them. Mm, they look so good. Mwah, mwah. If you wanna be like one of these gorgeous people right here and help support the channel every single month and be including things like early access to videos, giveaways, and more, then go ahead and head over to my Patreon page. But again, as always, thank you so much for watching. And of course, no matter where in the world you are, stay safe, practice that bass, and I'll see y'all next time.